Hello everyone, I'm Sarah of Rich Textures Crochet and welcome. Today we're going to be learning how to crochet the garden bucket hat, which you can see here in front of you. I also have my sample one here available. Uh, this bucket hat fits an adult head. It's going to be for the circumference about 23 inches around, so it's going to fit an adult. Uh, my daughter has worn it and it is uh, just a little bit more drapey on her, but she does also like it as well. So this is the garden bucket hat. It's made with a 100% cotton yarn. Today I'll be using the Pima Cotton by Lion Brand. You'll need three different colors to make it as I have done here. And we're going to work the pattern holding two strands of yarn together. So for the... Um, accent colors here you are only going to use maybe a hundred yards but uh, you will want to be holding two strands of yarn together and working with them at the same time so if it's easier to have two full balls on hand you can. For the uh, third color which in the picture I use the dragonfly color uh, you are going to need the full two balls of yarn so in each one there's 186 yards so again three colors two of the colors you'll only need about 100 yards the other one you'll need the full two balls of 186 uh, you're also going to need a six millimeter crochet hook as well as the free written pattern on richtexturescrochet.com direct links for each of these are in the description of this video uh, thank you so much for joining me. While you're here, I invite you to subscribe, take a look around. This channel is updated weekly with free crochet patterns and stitch tutorials. Now for a hat today, I am going to use slightly different colors than what I did in my sample. I'm going to begin with my color A uh, as this yellow color. Uh, in my sample one, I use the rose taupe color. We're going to start by working seven little crochet motifs. So you're going to make seven of these squares in total and these are going to form the bucket of the hat. They are worked in rounds so what we're going to do is we're going to begin by uh, making a slip knot and we're holding two strands of yarn together so again if you need to make two little balls of yarn uh, you don't need very much for this color A but you're going to hold these two strands together and work with them at the same time throughout the whole pattern. So you're going to then, once you've made your slip knot, chain two. Next, into the second chain from your hook, you're going to work eight single crochet stitches. So all into that second chain, there's one, two, three, four, and then a total of eight, there's five, six, seven, and eight. Now it's up to you, at the end of each color you can either fasten off each color or you can do what I'm going to do here and in my eighth stitch I'm going to insert my hook into that chain, yarn over, draw up a loop I'm then going to drop my color A and pick up some of my color B here, which I'm going to use this pink for, place it on my hook, and pull through. You can then fasten off that color A. That's all we're going to need uh, for this center part of our motif. So once you have your color B ready to go, you're going to join with a slip stitch into that first stitch, making sure that you are working underneath all of the, uh, the strands. Again, we're holding two strands of yarn together, and we're ready to begin round two of the motif. For round two, we're going to chain one, and we're going to make a puff stitch into the same stitch as joining. To work your puff stitch, you're going to yarn over, insert your hook into that same stitch, and I'm going to work over my tails so that I don't have to weave them in later, 
and draw up a loop. You want to draw the loop up to the height uh, of a half double crochet or higher. You're then going to yarn over, draw up a loop. You're going to do that three more times into the same stitch. Yarn over, insert your hook into that same stitch, yarn over, draw up a loop, yarn over, insert your hook into the same stitch, yarn over, draw up a loop. One more time, yarn over, insert your hook into the same stitch, draw up a loop, yarn over, draw up a loop. Once you have all the loops on your hook, yarn over and draw your hook through all of the loops. That's your puff stitch. You're then going to chain two. We're now going to repeat that in each stitch all the way around. So yarn over, insert your hook into the next stitch, yarn over and draw up a loop. Do that again three more times all into the same stitch. Once you've yarned over four times and inserted your hook, you're going to yarn over one more time, draw through all the loops on your hook and chain two. Repeat that in each stitch all the way around until you have a total of eight puff stitches. Once you come all the way around at the end of round two, you've chained two, you're going to join with the slip stitch in the top of the first stitch and we're going to be switching to our color C. Now again, depending on how you would like to do it, you can either join, fasten off, and um, then weave in your ends or I'm just going to insert my hook drop my color B, pick up the color A, and <laughs> go back here and pull my color C through. You're then going to chain one and you're ready to begin round three. Uh, this time you can fasten off that color B. For round three, we're going to begin with a chain one, then single crochet into that top of the puff stitch, so into that first stitch. You're then going to come to a chain two space. Into this chain two space, you're going to work a single crochet, chain two, and single crochet. Single crochet in the top of your next puff stitch. And into your next chain two space, work three single crochets. So there's one, two, and three. You're now going to repeat all the way around. Single crochet in the top of the next puff stitch. Into your next chain two space, work a single crochet, chain two, and single crochet single crochet in the top of your next puff stitch and then work three single crochets into your next chain two space. Repeat that all the way around and join with the slip stitch in the top of your first stitch. You're going to continue working in your color C. So I'm here at the end of my round three. Join with the slip stitch into the top of your first stitch. You should now have uh, each of these chain two spaces should form some kind of uh, little corners for your motif. We're going to continue working in the same direction, chain one for round four, single crochet in each of the first two stitches. Into your next chain two space you're going to work three single crochet. Next single crochet in each of the next seven stitches.
and then into your corner space into your chain two space work three single crochet you're going to repeat this all the way around to your first stitch and then you'll join with a slip stitch into your first stitch at the end of your round four join with a slip stitch into that first stitch you can then fasten off and you're going to go ahead and weave in any ends. After you've woven in your ends, and I'm just, I have one left here quickly to do. After you've woven in your ends, you're going to go ahead and repeat those steps until you've worked a total of seven of these motifs. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And once you've worked all seven of them, you're then going to sew them together so that they make a ring. Now you just lay them side by side and I'll show you how I sewed uh, mine together. You may have a way that you prefer to do it, but you wanna sew them all together in a row um, and then join the final two or the first one with the last one to make a ring. When you're doing the join, you only need to use one strand of uh, cotton. You don't need to hold two together. I used a yarn needle, so I'm going to sew them together. Again, it's up to you. And I just simply began by uh, first tucking in my end so that I didn't have to go back and do it after. And then I just kind of crossed it over just to secure it on this one square. You're then going to find your corner stitch and begin sewing in that first corner stitch. Okay, so I brought my needle through to the front. And then holding my two together and matching the stitches, you want to make sure that you're uh, not skipping any in between. You're simply going to sew them together. So I'm just going out, then down to the next one, just like so. then across into the next stitch. So I'm just working in my stitches sewing them. This is going to create a fairly flat seam all the way down to the next corner stitch. Once again making sure that you're not skipping or doubling up, just sewing them all the way down. Once I come to my final stitch here in the corner, I'm going to go through to the back, and then because I don't like uh, weaving in my ends, I simply turned it over and I just ran my needle under the stitches of that final row across to the next corner stitch, pulled it flat, make sure it's well hidden, brought it up in the next corner stitch. And then take my next square and once again matching the corners, sewed the two squares together. So you're going to do this until all seven of them are joined and then once again as I mentioned you're going to join that first one with the last one to form a ring which will make the bucket of your hat. So go ahead, piece your squares together, or finish your squares if you haven't yet, piece them together, and then meet me back here. Okay. 
Once you have joined all of your little squares together, it'll look like this. We're then going to work two more rounds on the top and the bottom of our squares. So you're going to just join anywhere. Once again, you're working with two strands of yarn held together. Join anywhere around uh, the top or the bottom of the band with a slip stitch. You're going to want the right side of your motifs facing out. You're then going to work a single crochet or single crochet two together all the way around. So into my first stitch, I'll work a single crochet and single crochet into each stitch all the way across the top of my motif here. What we're going to do also, I, I should have mentioned, we want to have a total of 72 stitches once we're done our band. So you may need to ha add an extra stitch at some point. Uh, when I was working mine, I always added it at the very end right before I joined. So you're going to work across. When you come to the join in the motifs, you're going to work a single crochet two together over each corner stitch. So I have a corner stitch here and a corner stitch there. To work the crochet two together, insert your hook into that corner stitch, yarn over, draw up a loop, jump across and insert your hook into the next stitch, yarn over, draw up a loop, yarn over and pull through two loops. That's just going to give you a nice uh, even flat kind of join and round here up at the top. You're then just going to continue working single crochet stitches all the way across until you come to your next join. When you come to your next two corner squares, you're going to again work a single crochet two together over uh, those two squares, working into the two corner stitches, and then continue around. At the end of this round, once again, you want a total of 72 stitches all the way around, join with a slip stitch into that first stitch and then you're going to go ahead and repeat this round down at the bottom round as well. Then fasten off and uh, meet me back here. So I've now worked the single crochet and single crochet two together round all the way around the top and the bottom. It's going to make it really easy to join this to the top and uh, then begin the brim. So what we're going to do now is once you have finished the bucket of your hat, you can then set it aside. We're now going to work the top of our hat, which again is worked in rounds. Uh, you're going to work using your color C and holding two strands of yarn together in your six millimeter hook. You can either start by chaining two and then working into that second chain as I showed you earlier uh, or you can work a magic ring it's up to you. If uh, you do the chain two method you may find that you need to kind of cinch the top closed a little bit but otherwise you can join uh, start with the slip knot chain two and then into the second chain from your hook work eight single crochet stitches. Once you've worked your eight single crochet, you can join with a slip stitch into the top of that first stitch. Chain one, we're going to continue working in rounds. You're going to begin round two by working two single crochet into each stitch 
all the way around. At the end of this round, you're going to have a total of 16 stitches. So working two single crochet into each stitch. These are my last two. Once you've worked those 16 single crochets, two in each, join with a slip stitch into the top of that first stitch. Chain one. For round three, we're going to work one single crochet into our first stitch, followed by two single crochets into the next. You're going to repeat that all the way around. One single crochet into the next stitch and two single crochets into the next. Repeat all the way around. At the end of this round you're going to have a total of 24 stitches. When you come around to your first stitch, join with a slip stitch into that first stitch. and join. For round four, chain one. This time you're going to work one single crochet in each of the first two stitches and then two single crochet into the next stitch. Repeat that, one single crochet in each of the next two stitches and two single crochets into the next. Repeat that all the way around. At the end of your round four, you're going to have a total of 32 stitches. Join with a slip stitch into that first stitch. For round five, chain one, you're going to work a single crochet into each of the first three stitches. and two single crochets into the next. Repeat that, one single crochet into each of the next three stitches, and two single crochets into the next. At the end of this round, you're going to have a total of 40 stitches. You're then going to continue working these increase rounds until you have a total of 72 stitches. So continue your next round, you're going to work one in each of the next four and then two, one in each of the next five, then two, one in each of the next six, and then two. And then finally, you're, when you come to your round nine, you will work one in each of the next seven and then two stitches into the next. So you're going to continue working these increase rounds through to round nine, at the end of each, at the end of round nine, you'll have a total of 72 single crochet stitches. Join with a slip stitch in that first stitch, and then fasten off and weave in your ends, and that will finish the top of your hat. Okay, so once you have worked through to round nine for the top of your hat. You'll have a total of 72 single crochet stitches. You're then going to join the top of your hat with the bucket of your hat. To do that, we're going to turn our 
uh, bucket part inside out. And we're going to, around the top part, place the right sides together. And we're going to be working into the front loop, which is actually the back side of our um, back side of our uh, motifs on that first piece and into the back loop only of the top of our hat. Okay, so I'll show you again. We're working into the front loop only, that loop that's closest to you on the motif side and into the back loop only of the top of our hat. Okay, you're then going to just join your yarn with the slip stitch. We're working through both thicknesses and you're going to work uh, slip stitches in each stitch all the way around. So I'm going to just chain one, then into my next piece again into the back, the front loop only of our motif, and then across into the back loop only of the top of our hat and slip stitch. You're going to continue that all the way around, making sure that you're not skipping any stitches. You don't want any holes in the top of your hat. Once you come all the way around, you can join with a slip stitch into that first stitch and turn your hat right side out. Once you have worked slip stitches all the way around the top of your hat, you can join with a slip stitch into that first stitch and then fasten off and then feel free to go ahead and weave in any ends. You can then turn your hat so that it is right side out and you should have a fairly nice textured seam here all the way around the top of your hat. I'll just pull it out a little bit so you can see it. You're now ready then to begin the brim of your hat. So we're going to um, turn our hat so that we can work around the edge and you're going to join your yarn anywhere. Again, we're using two thicknesses here, two strands of yarn held together and just join with a slip stitch. We're now going to continue working this first round by working under the front loop only. So when you're looking at the top of your stitch, that's this loop that is the closest to you. You're going to work under the front loop only. Beginning in the first stitch, the same stitch is joining. You're going to single crochet into that stitch and then into each of the next seven stitches. So we want a total of, I'm just working over my yarn here so I don't have to tuck it in later. So we're going to work a total of eight single crochet stitches all into that front loop only. So I'm here, that's number three. Make sure that you're always working under the two strands. four, five, six, seven, and eight. You're going to work then two single crochets into the next stitch. Again, working in that front loop only. We're now going to repeat. Work one single crochet in the front loop only of each of the next eight stitches.
and then two single crochets on the front loop only of the next stitch. Continue that all the way around and join with a slip stitch under both loops of your first stitch. At the end of round one for your brim, you're going to join with a slip stitch into that first stitch and chain one. Do not turn your work. We're now for round two going to work under both loops. So we're no longer working in the front loop only. We're working under both loops, single crochet into that same stitch as joining, and then into each stitch all the way around. When you come to your first stitch, join with a slip stitch into the top of that first stitch. For round three, we're going to chain one you're going to single crochet in each of the first nine stitches. We're continuing to work under both loops. Then work two single crochets into the next stitch. You're now going to repeat that all the way around. One single crochet in each of the next nine stitches, followed by two single crochets in the next stitch. When you come all the way around, join with the slip stitch into that first stitch and chain one. At the end of round three, you will have a total of 88 stitches. At the end of round three, you've joined with a slip stitch in that first stitch, chained one. For round four, we're simply going to single crochet into that same stitch as joining, and then single crochet into each stitch all the way around. When you come to your first stitch, join with a slip stitch into that first stitch, and chain one. For round five, you're going to chain one, single crochet into each of the first 10 stitches. and then work two single crochets into the next stitch. You're going to repeat that all the way around. Work one single crochet into each of the next 10 stitches, two single crochet stitches in the next stitch, and uh, then join with a slip stitch once you come all the way around and chain one. At the end of round five, you're going to have a total of 96 stitches. Once you come around on round five, you're going to join with a slip stitch into your first stitch and chain one. For round six, you've probably guessed it, you're going to single crochet into that first stitch and then single crochet into each stitch all the way around. When you come to the first stitch at the end of round six, you're going to join with a slip stitch into your first stitch. At the end of round six, join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch and chain one. For round seven, we're going to single crochet into that first stitch and in each of the next 10 stitches. So for a total of 11 single crochets. And you're then going to single crochet two stitches into the next stitch. Repeat that all the way around. Work one single crochet in each of the next 11 stitches, followed by two single crochets in the next stitch, 
and then uh, join with a slip stitch in your first stitch. At the end of round seven, you've joined with a slip stitch into the top of that first stitch, chain one. For round eight, you're going to single crochet into that first stitch and then into each stitch all the way around, joining with a slip stitch in the top of your first stitch. At the end of your round eight, join with a slip stitch into the top of that first stitch. We have one more round to go before we have finished our hat. You're going to chain one. For round nine, we're going to work a reverse single crochet into each stitch all the way around. So normally when I'm working, I'm working from right to left. For the reverse single crochet, we're going to work left to right. So starting in the previous stitch, you're going to bring your hook back, insert it into that previous stitch, yarn over, draw up a loop, yarn over and pull through your two loops. That's your reverse single crochet. You're going to do it into the next stitch, in the previous stitch, yarn over, draw up a loop, yarn over and pull through two. It's going to give us this uh, almost a corded look around the outside of our hat, adding a little bit of texture. It's a fairly uh, stiff stitch as well. So it's going to give our hat a little bit more shape also. So continue working these reverse single crochet stitches all the way around and uh, then join with a slip stitch into your first stitch. Fasten off, weave in your ends and your garden bucket hat is complete. So thank you so much for joining me. And uh, once again, don't forget to subscribe, say hello down in the comments. And once you are finished your own garden bucket hat, I hope that you enjoy it very much. I absolutely love mine. So until next time, happy crocheting, and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye.